All right, picking up where we left off, this is part two of chapter two, research methodology. What types of studies are used in psychological research? There are three main types of designs. There are descriptive studies, correlational studies, and experimental studies. An important aspect of each of these is the variable. It is something in the world that can vary and that a research can manipulate, change, measure, evaluate, or both. Descriptive research consists of case studies, observation, and self-report method methods. Descriptive research is research methods that involve observing behavior to describe that behavior objectively and systematically. A case study is a descriptive research method that involves the intensive examination of an unusual person or organization. Observational studies, such as this one using a one-way mirror, are a method that researchers use to describe behavior objectively. An example of a case study in this image of patient N.A., you can see where the miniature foil penetrated the brain regions that had not traditionally been seen as involved in memory. This, got, this case study provided new insights into how the brain creates memories. There are two main types of observation studies, participant and naturalistic. Participant observation is a type of descriptive study in which the researcher is involved in the situation. Naturalistic observation is a type of descriptive study in which the researcher is a passive observer, separated from the situation, and making no attempt to change or alter ongoing behavior. Here an example of participant observation, the evolutionarily Evolutionary psychologist and human behavioral ecologist Lawrence Sugiyama has conducted field work in Ecuadorian Amazonia among the Shiwar, Akiwar, Shiwar, Zapato peoples. Here he's hunting with a bow and arrow and is conducting a particularly active form of participant observation. An example of naturalistic observation. The primatologist Jane Goodall observes a family of chimpanzees. Animals are more likely to act naturally in their native habitats than in captivity. There are also self-report methods and interviews. Self-report methods of data collection in which people are asked to provide information about themselves, such as in surveys or questionnaires. Interviews can be used successfully with groups that cannot be studied through surveys or questionnaires, such as young children. Here's a figure that lays out these research methods we're talking about. Descriptive studies need to guard against, bi against bias. A problem common to all descriptive studies is that behavior can be affected by being studied. Reactivity is the phenomenon that occurs when knowledge that one is being observed alters the behavior being observed. For example, the Hawthorne studies. Here we're going to talk about the Hawthorne effect. The hypothesis is being observed can lead participants to change their behavior. During studies of the effects of workplace conditions, the researchers manipulated several independent variables such as levels of lighting, pay incentives, and break schedules. The researchers then measured the dependent variable, the speed at which workers did their jobs. The results. The workers' productivity increased when they were being observed regardless of changes to their working conditions. And that pay incentives, break schedules, and levels of lighting had nothing to do with it. The conclusion, 
being observed can lead participants to change their behavior. For instance, some of you may have jobs, maybe less so right now during the pandemic, but you might have this experience. Does the presence of your manager in the room make you pay more attention to the rules and procedures and do a better job? It always worked on me. Observer bias. This is systematic errors and observations that occur because of an observer's expectations. Observer bias can especially be a problem if cultural norms favor inhibiting or expressing certain behaviors. The observer perceives things according to their own culture and could misunderstand someone's behavior. The experimenter expectancy effect. An actual change in behavior of the people or non-human animals being observed that is due to the expectations of the observer. In a classic study by the social psychologist Robert Rosenthal, college students trained rats to run a maze. One group was told that their rats were especially good at tasks, and the other group were told that their rats were dumb. The group with the good rats did better. Why? The students inadvertently treated the rats differently based on what they were told. Correlational studies describe and predict how variables are related. Correlational studies is a research method that describes and predicts how variables are naturally related in the real world, without any attempt by the researcher to alter them or assign causation between them. Researchers do not attempt to alter variables. Researchers cannot draw causal conclusions from correlational studies. There may be a correlation between parents' body size and their children's body size. A correlational study cannot demonstrate the cause or causes of this relationship, which may include nature, biological propensities, and nurture, exercise, and diet. An important aspect to a correlation is the direction. This is derived by using a scatter plot is a graphical depiction of a relationship between two variables. For a positive correlation, it's a relationship between two variables in which both variables either increase or decrease at the same time. Positive in this case does not mean good. There is a negative correlation. This is a relationship between two variables in which one variable increases while, while the other decreases, or vice versa. Here, negative does not mean bad. It just implies the direction. There's also such a thing as a zero correlation. This is a relationship between two variables in which one variable is not predictably related to the other. For example, there is zero correlation between gender and intelligence. Here are some examples of graphs that depict a positive, positive relationship, positive direction, and then a negative direction, and a zero correlation. Thinking critically about correlations. Complications prevent researchers from drawing causal conclusions from correlational studies. Two such complications are the directionality problem and the third variable problem. The directionality problem. A problem encountered in correlational studies. The researchers find a relationship between two variables, but they cannot determine which variable may have caused changes in the other variable. For example, sleep and stress are correlated. However, does less sleep cause more stress or does more stress cause less sleep? Which one causes the other? That's the nature of the directionality problem. The third variable problem. This is a problem that occurs when a researcher cannot directly manipulate variables. As a result, the researcher cannot be confident that another unmeasured variable is not the actual cause of the differences in the variables of interest. For example, texting while driving is correlated with driving dangerously. Risk-taking C as a third variable 
causes some people to text while driving. Risk-taking, the third variable, might also cause some people to drive dangerously. So in this case, it could be a third variable or some other variable that brings about the, the results. Ethical reasons for using correlational designs. Some research questions require correlational research designs for ethical reasons. For example, do soldiers who experience severe trauma during combat have more difficulty learning new tasks after they return home compared to soldiers who have experienced less severe trauma? It would be unethical to induce trauma in some soldiers for the purpose of collecting data and comparing the different groups. This cannot be done. Making predictions. By establishing correlations between variables, researchers are able to make predictions. For example, correlational research has identified a strong relationship between depression and suicide. Clinical psychologists often assess symptoms of depression to determine suicide risk. Correlation or causation. According to the players on the 2013 Boston Red Sox baseball team, facial hair causes a person to play better baseball. After two nearly bearded players made some game-saving plays, the rest of the team stopped shaving. Did their beards cause the Red Sox to win the World Series that year? The facial hair may have been correlated with winning, but it did not cause an increase in talent. The team won through ability, practice, and perhaps chance. The experimental method controls and explains. An experiment is a research method that tests causal hypotheses by manipulating and measuring variables. An experiment also allows researchers to test multiple hypotheses to examine and refine their theory. There are types of variables. An independent variable, the IV, is a variable that gets manipulated in a research study. The dependent variable, or DV, is the variable that gets measured in a research study. It measures the outcome. Operational definition is a definition that qualifies, describes, and quantifies, measures a variable so that the variable can be understood objectively. You manipulate the independent variable to produce changes in the dependent variable. And that is the one that is measured. And about manipulating variables, you do this with groups. There's an experimental group, the participants in an experiment who receive the treatment. So if we were testing a drug, you would give the actual drug to the experimental group. And then there is a control group, the participants in an experiment who receive no intervention or who receive an intervention that is unrelated to the independent variable being investigated. And to the example that I'm talking about, they would receive a sugar pill, also known as the placebo. So the experimental group receives the treatment, control group receives a placebo. Establishing causality. A confound is anything that affects the dependent variable and that may unintentionally vary between the experimental conditions of the study. In collect conducting an experiment, a researcher needs to ensure that the only thing that varies is the independent variable. Control thus represents the foundation of the experimental approach in that it allows the researcher to rule out alternative explanations for the observed data. Participant selection. This is an important issue for any research method, and it is how to select participants for the study in question. Psychologists typically want to know that their findings generalize to people beyond the individuals in the study. Population and sampling. The population is everyone in the group the experimenter is interested in. A sample is a subset of that population. 
random sampling is every person in the population has an equal chance of being selected. A convenience sample is a sample that consists of people who are conveniently available for the study. To make that make sense, it's like doing studies at EKU and using the students. The students are a convenient sample. Suppose researchers want to compare how many women go to the beach versus how many men do. Why might the results be more accurate if the research, researchers used a larger sample, such as the big picture here, rather than a small sample, such as the detail? Well, the larger the group you do means it's more going to closely match the larger population. Random assignment. You can never be sure that you have assessed all possible factors that may differ between the groups. Random assignment is placing research participants into conditions of an experiment in such a way that each participant has an equal chance of being assigned to any level of the independent variable. Random assignment balances out known and unknown factors, increasing the likelihood that the groups are equivalent. Selection bias can be a problem, though. In an experiment, unintended differences between the participants and, and different groups, it could be caused by non-random assignment to groups. There's a graph that lays out the experimental method in action. An experiment examines how one variable changes as another is manipulated by the researcher. The results can demonstrate causal relationships between the variables. And this concludes part two of the lecture.